Today, I'm going to explain the movie Tales of the Unusual, live stream, released in the year 2020. Agaki works in a media company and is often overworked by his bosses. One day, he returns to the office with his co-worker after a long day of shooting. On giving his boss a call, he is asked to complete research for the next interview. He reluctantly walks into the office even though all he wants to do is go back home. Agaki soon gets bored and starts to live stream on a streaming website. He has always wanted to be a social media influencer, but hasn't been successful yet. After starting the live stream, he welcomes his audience, even though there's only one member. Agaki believes that since he is in a TV broadcasting station, people will find the stream interesting. He talks about his experience being an assistant director in a show about food. However, it is almost as if he is talking to himself because the number of viewers does not go up. Wanting to do something out of the box, he eats his lady co-worker's leftover food. Still, he gets only 10 views and zero likes. All of a sudden, a viewer comments that he knows a way to increase the viewer count in any live show. Following the comment, he sends a link to the chat box. Agaki doesn't think much of it before clicking the link, but it just might be the biggest mistake of his life. Immediately after clicking it, his screen starts to glitch. He tries pressing several buttons, but nothing makes it go back to normal. Then, a video of the building's parking lot is played in the stream, although Agaki is inside the office. He watches his own live stream in shock, trying to close it. The anonymous person walks down the hallways and enters the building. While trying to get into the elevator, the security guard stops him. The man takes out a knife and stabs the guard to death. Agaki retreats from his computer in horror. The viewer count increases rapidly after the kill. Most of them think it is a prank and ask Agaki to end the live show. From the audience's point of view, Agaki seems to have killed the guard because it was his stream. The killer now gets on the elevator and makes his way to the upper floors. Agaki does everything he can to close the stream, but nothing works. He writes that the broadcast has ended in the chat box to try to send everyone away, but none of the audience leaves. Now, the killer is in the hallways walking towards where Agaki is. He realizes this and starts to panic. Right before the killer walks in, he hides under the table and watches the stream on his phone. The killer walks closer and looks at Agaki's desk, but thankfully doesn't find him. Then, he walks back to the hallways, when suddenly someone comments that the assistant director is hiding under the table. The killer looks through the window and sees Agaki hiding in the corner. Agaki also notices that the killer has seen him and runs for his life. He impatiently waits for the elevator while hoping the person wouldn't find him. But on looking at the stream, he notices that the killer is walking towards him. Agaki then rushes down the stairs and ends up on the floor below. He runs to the bathroom and hides inside a stall. Back in the stream, the killer seems to be walking down the hallway. He is about to pass the bathroom without checking it, but someone in the chat box tells him that Agaki might be hiding in one of the stalls. Agaki panics, but there is no way for him to escape. The killer knocks on the doors and finds one of them locked. As he bangs it open, Agaki holds his breath, knowing that his death is near. But to his luck, it turns out that the killer was banging on another stall that has his co-worker, Mr. Anyang, in it. The killer slashes Mr. Anyang's throat and kills him. Following that, he walks outside and continues to look for his main target. Agaki also runs outside and hides in the hallways, trying to think of what he should do next. Just then, he remembers that Mr. Anyang has keys to their company's car that he parked in the parking lot earlier. He runs back to the bathroom and apologizes to Mr. Anyang before taking out the key from his pocket. When he walks outside and checks the live stream, he comes across a terrifying sight. The killer is right behind him, filming him at that very moment. Agaki runs to the elevator while the killer follows behind. By now, the live stream has crossed 1,200 views and 200 likes. The people in the comments still think of it as a prank and even help the killer to find Agaki. They swarm the chat box asking the killer to end Agaki's life once and for all. 
All of a sudden, Agaki falls face down and hurts his ankle. He is only seconds away from entering the elevator, so he doesn't give up. As the killer catches up to him, he limps towards the elevator and closes the door only seconds before being caught. The killer's knife is also lost while trying to get in. Agaki falls to the floor, trying to catch his breath. On reaching the parking lot, he quickly gets inside the car, locks it, and breathes a sigh of relief. He checks the live stream one last time and is surprised again. The killer is right outside, with his camera directly pointed at Agaki. He immediately tries to start the car, but it doesn't work. As a frustrated Agaki yells for it to start, the killer walks to a fire extinguisher to use it to smash the window and break into his car. He picks it up and is seconds away from hitting the window when suddenly, a viewer comments that he really needs to call the police. The comment makes the killer stop. Agaki, who had been bracing himself for the impact, is confused and doesn't know what to do. The killer turns around and ends the live show at more than 5,000 views and 1,000 likes. Agaki is beyond relieved to see that it ended. When he looks up from his phone, the security guard and Mr. Anyang, who are supposed to be dead, stand in front of the car. Agaki laughs at the absurdity of the situation and claims that he knew it was a prank. Since they work for a media company, he believes that they were filming a reality prank show. But then, he looks back to his phone and notices that the live stream has started again. The same person who had commented about calling the police earlier now says that he is curious about what will happen next. Following the comment, many viewers demand to watch the ending no matter what. Agaki asks them to stop through the phone, but to no avail. Mr. Anyong starts to film Agaki on his phone, continuing the live show as per the viewer's request. Agaki gets more frustrated by the second. He admits that he has been a fool, but begs Mr. Anyong to stop the broadcast. However, the man smiles at his misery and doesn't stop filming. On looking at the broadcast, Agaki sees that the killer from earlier has somehow entered the back of his car and is about to stab him. He slowly turns around and comes face to face with his death. The comment box is filled with people asking the man to kill him. The viewer count is above 8,000 and is growing rapidly. Agaki begs for his life as the man comes near him with the knife. Just then, the viewer's count reaches 10,000. The killer stops and claims that it was a fun ride. The audience who had been asking the killer to murder Agaki now congratulate him for hitting the 10,000 viewers milestone. In the following scene, we see the killer is in front of Agaki's laptop, happy that he was able to help him. At last, he finally ends the live show.